from the Cannon Center for Performing Arts in Memphis, Tennessee. It's the 24th Annual Freedom Award, brought to you by the National Civil Rights Museum, featuring Freedom Award honorees, Charlene hunter Galt, Robert Moses, Frank E. Robinson, and Tom Brokaw. Now please, welcome our host, best-selling author, and one of the nation's most renowned intellectuals, Dr. Michael Eric Dyson. Thank you. Good evening. What happens in this country and how people are treated is an issue we're still fighting. That's why we're still dealing with Ferguson. The fires are still burning bright. The embers and the simmering rage that is in that city is in the souls of everybody who has fought for justice. Hands up, don't shoot. And you can count on me to keep the conversation honest and real and bring injustices out of darkness into the light, even in black tie. Got mine on tonight. <laughs> Today I toured the new National Civil Rights Museum. What an experience. I felt such a range of emotions from anger to sadness to triumph to I must stand up and speak out on behalf of all of those who were victims of American injustice and those who are defenders of American democracy. Hearing the voices and seeing the faces of the people in the movement was something else. I was extremely moved. They say you are forever changed when you visit, and for me, that's absolutely true. And now tonight, I'm honored to share this stage with some phenomenal and inspiring individuals. This year's Freedom Award honorees, the legendary Charlene Hunter Galt, a tremendous journalist. The incredibly inspiring civil rights activist, mathematician, and Harvard pedigreed intellectual Robert Paris Moses. The great baseball genius Frank Robinson. And Tom Brokaw, an iconic journalist who continues to make us proud. They are truly barrier breakers, each having engaged in advancing freedom and equally in equality, whether it was bringing global attention to the devastation of apartheid and America's crippling desegregation and depression, or fighting against voter disenfranchisement or giving us the front and backstory to world-moving episodes like the failing and falling of the Berlin Wall. Their actions broke barriers and advanced freedom and drove critical change, and to them we are eternally grateful. Please welcome Bathsheba Sams, Vice President of HR Operations at International Paper. Good evening. This year's National Freedom Award recipient, civil rights activist and educator, Robert Paris Moses, exemplifies what it means to be an advocate for freedom and education. Tonight, join me as we pay tribute to Bob Moses' leadership, his passion, and never-ending commitment to equality and education. Let's watch his story. Bob Paris Moses was a valiant soldier in the combat zones of the civil rights movement. As a leader, he conquered fear by keeping his eyes on the prize of freedom during some of the darkest days of our nation's history. Born in Harlem, New York, Moses graduated from Stuyvesant High School in 1952 and received his bachelor's degree from Hamilton College in 1956. In 1958, he earned a master's in philosophy at Harvard and began teaching at the Horace Mann School in the Bronx of New York City. His work as a civil rights activist began in 1960 when he became field secretary for the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, often referred to as SNCC. In 1961, he gave up his life in Harlem to go to Mississippi 
and wage a grassroots campaign for voter rights. As a leader of SNCC, Moses faced relentless violence and intimidation as he traveled to the counties in Mississippi to educate and register voters. He was beaten and arrested in a Mid County. In 1965, only one African American in a Mid County was registered to vote. By 1964, Moses had become co-director of the Council of Federated Organizations, an umbrella organization for major civil rights groups working in Mississippi. He recruited college students from around the country to come to Mississippi to help with voter education and registration. He was also the main organizer of the Freedom Summer Project. Although Moses was credited with being a calm leader who kept the group focused during turbulent times, he insisted that it was the assassination of Medgar Evers that provided the catalyst for Freedom Summer. 